Hi everyone and welcome back to Let's Do Bonsai, I'm Scott Winard. Today's been a busy, busy day here today. We finished off the cobblestones and uh, I decided to put a load of sockets in the, the greenhouse and we are preparing to put some lighting in, but uh, that'll be for a future episode and a future day. So, I hope you enjoy what I've been up to today and here we go. Okay, so I've just been reviewing some of the footage that you're about to see and unfortunately I was wearing the GoPro on my head for most of it and I must have taken it off at some point really early and then put it back on but not paid any attention to which direction the GoPro was pointing. So most of what you're about to see has been severely edited and a lot taken out because basically the view that you were getting was of the wall as I was looking at to sockets and, and other things and you know putting the sockets together really frustrating because there was a lot of good footage there for you to see but um, yeah I'm gonna have to heavily edit it and take a lot out uh, I'm sorry if it doesn't make sense uh, part ways through where I'm talking um, but I don't really want to give you footage of explaining something that I'm doing and all you can see is a wall so apologies for that uh, we were using the conduit pipe bender and vice uh, to, to work with the conduit uh, the spray for the cutting tool uh, I will show you the um, the threading tool shortly uh, but again this is the sockets that we put in today and we were threading and cutting the uh, the conduit pipe so this is the tool we were using for cutting the thread into the conduit the stock and die and basically that die fits into that stock and the lead stock goes into there first so that slots into there and then the 20 mil cutting die is in there so that is in there that is on top of there and then it's all come down on there and then you have the the arms of the unit put together like that and it's a you know twist and turn twist and turn threading and as I was reviewing the um, the footage I'm talking I'm doing it but literally the GoPro was looking over the top of uh, of the project of what we was doing so apologies um, it's not going to make too much sense in places but I will edit it uh, but just show a bit of something for what we were actually doing so what we've got is the Seeker Fast Fix All Weather Self Setting Jointing Compound and uh, it's really easy to do. Uh, we've got six packs of it. It comes with two sealed packets inside and uh, what you do is come to the area, you can see I've already wet it down a bit but you spray the area to wet it in and then you add the compound you chuck it over the uh, the joints then we proceed to brush it into all the joints nice and evenly making sure that it goes down and into each of the, the cracks in between each block so obviously you do use quite a bit of the compound as it disappears into those joints so we get it all brushed in get it all nice and even and then we uh, after that we point it up so we've brushed into all the joints the jointing compound and now we're just beginning to point up all the joints. Uh, having done some already, what we have found is that uh, if you come in the following day and repoint, it isn't quite set in this environment. They do say that setting time depends on the environment of which you're laying this stuff. Um, on the box, it tends to say about 16 hours. But uh, in our case here, it's taken probably more than a day to proper, properly go off. And um, 
this will be repointed again tomorrow after we've repointed this. But when they're wet and you look at them, it looks absolutely beautiful. And all pointed in and dressed in, it's been a worthwhile job. So we've uh, pointed up all the joints, they're going to be repointed again tomorrow. Uh, but whilst we've got a lot of stuff out of the greenhouse here, <clears throat> what I'm going to do is put a, a row of sockets for power across this wall all the way to the back and then we'll have some uh, tray work going up and we'll have two rows of three lights coming across the top as uh, a bit of compensation for the light that we actually miss out on. So I've started off by coring a hole into the house. So that's going to take our main supply, you know, on the ring on the other side, coming out, going down. And then we've got half a dozen RCD protected sockets, which will fit. So there'll be one going over this hole, another two or three that way and then the other two or three that way, equally spaced, and then there'll be um, a relay unit down the bottom end, or timer, to control the light fittings that are gonna go across the ceiling here. So we'll get cracked on and start putting some sockets on. So the first thing we're going to do is knock out one of these holes at the back of the back boxes and mount a piece of steel conduit, galvanized steel conduit to go through that hole and that's where our cables will pass through. Normally you can just tap these out with a hammer but we might need to hit it with a screwdriver so let's see. So that's tapped out nicely with the hammer and we'll just put a, a coupler and a bush in that and our couplers and bushes are in here so what we'll also do while we're here is we'll knock out one of the side bushes but well, in fact we're going to have to knock out both side bushes anyway um, to bush and couple up both sides so I'll quickly do that so that's set up for a socket at the side of it and a length of conduit to go down the wall and we've got the socket there and then we'll send a length of conduit down that side of the wall. We're going to try and go around the back of the downpipe there but if it sticks out a little bit too much we'll have to set around the drain pipe and that's where the pipe bender will come in. You're just about to see the pipe bender have that partly in position so that now gives us two sockets in place And then what we'll do is we'll place the bush with the coupling part into the hole and I'll just position myself so I can get underneath. We'll place the level on top of those sockets. And we'll just go for some sort of straight level which is about there. Mark the holes. Then the same here. So we've got a few markings of where the holes are. We'll drill as many of them as we can. <coughs> so we'll get the drill. So we'll go for the first one, which is there. And what I like to do is I like to get the vacuum cleaner to help collect the dust because we don't want all that dust all over our new floor. Would help if we put it on hammer.
line up for our next hole. Get our vacuum ready to use. in there so we'll just get that one one up here for the first ticket one down here Get some red plugs in position in there. We'll just line up our sockets, pipe boxes. Yep, we can see lots of screw holes there to capture. So we need a bush and a coupler on this end and uh, a little bit of conduit to disappear into the, the wall in there. So let's, let's get that done. So that gives us the first two sockets, the cable in and out, the cable that way and the cable that way. So let's go and cut our piece of conduit that's going to go into the wall. So we've got a length of conduit here and we'll clamp that in position. That's nicely clamped. The end comes pre-threaded so we don't have to thread our first end. But what we do need to do is saw off the bit that's going to go into the wall. So I think if we allow at least that that's enough to get through the first brick and a bit of the breeze that's in the wall. We could go further, but I don't think we particularly need to. We're a bit wobbly on the floor here. I'll just try and level that off. That should do us. And there we are with our little bit of conduit. Now normally you'd have a file and you'd file all these bird edges away. I don't think I've got a file in this bag so we're going to have to go without the filing. Or you'd have a deburring tool and you'd rub that in and it seems to be that it's the one tool that I haven't got. So we'll thread, thread in our bit that's going through the wall. That's in all nice and tight. Stick that in. So we'll get our first screw in there. That's hit something, so we'll just push that up and that will be the first screw in there that's good that's fixed another screw put that in and there we go so they're nice and tight on there and what we'll do now is we'll get a length of tube to bring it down to about here and whatever's left over we'll take down that side. Grab the 
conjure it a little bit better in the vice. On and off, on and off, half a turn back, half a turn back, bites its way through the conduit. Does a really good job. Nice and easy. Twisting and cutting back until we've got enough thread to go into the coupler. If you need, if it starts breaking and changing, you need to put some more cutting compound on, but it's not doing too bad at the moment. You get a feel for it as it's going around the thread. And I think that's gonna do us. So you wind it back off. And there you go, that's our lovely thread ready to go into our coupler on the socket. So we need so much to go down the wall in there. So we'll uh, measure that up, we'll release the pipe because we're gonna have to cut that at a suitable length so I'll just hook that on there and we'll measure how long a piece we need in here so we're gonna aim for no socket beyond here so the two sockets will fill in that sort of space you know a brick and a half maybe so we need to bring our conduit that long. So allowing for a bit of thread inside the coupler. We want that to be about 34 inch. So you can see the threads in there come at least halfway and that bites on lovely. <clears throat> and if we get the saw, just hang that on there for now. And we want to be at uh, 33. Because we're going to have a thread and a coupler on the end of this. Put my foot on the horse. Bite that a bit more. I'm going to wish I had a deburring tool or a file. So that's that's our length cut. We just need to thread the end. So we'll release this piece of pipe that's in. Normally what you would do is you'd get a bit of an oily rag and wrap it around the galve conduit to stop the teeth of these jaws biting in. You can see there there's a bit of a mark where the teeth have bitten in. Um, so if you was doing this on a job and it needed to be really perfect, you would have a bit of an oily rag that you would put into here and just, or a bit of inner tube or something like that, some rubber, something that just would prevent the teeth from biting into the conduit itself so we've got our cutter our fluid our cutting oil and put a bit of that on that's gone on okay and put a little bit into the tool itself and then we just push on so it's flat on and then we turn until it bites and then once it's bit you turn it back and then we keep going that's not holding very well so we'll tighten that up 
and now it turns with the turn back. Same process again. And the, the turning back just smartens up the thread because you're cutting into the conduit and then the backward stroke just takes off the cut piece and stops it building up too much inside the stock and die and keeps the thread nice and clean. And that will absolutely do us. We'll put that down, release our pipe. Look open the vise, you can see there there's some bite marks, not too bad, nothing for us to worry about too much. And then back into here, we need to, uh, it probably doesn't need it too much, but just for doing a proper job, that thread goes into there and then the pipe being level, which it should be at that, that's about level with the brickwork, so hopefully that's about level. Maybe just up ever so slightly. I'm just gonna change the drill bit because I thought the uh, red plugs were a bit sloppy in those first bits. That was a six mil drill bit. This is a 5.5, 5.5 for red, six mil for the brown. So uh, we were using the wrong drill there. So we'll just position ourselves again and start drilling. <laughs> Save all the dust from going all over the floor. So plug, that's gone in nice and tight and we'll get our saddle here and we'll undo it. Drop that in and then we'll just put our saddle in position. And if we test it, hopefully I measured that correctly and that's gonna go into our thread and sit in that just about right. So we'll just thread that in where we want it. We'll use our bush tool to tighten up on the end. That's good. And then just put that down. We can Fix our saddle into position. Oh. Loosen the screw off and you can normally flick the saddle on without taking it fully off. So that's it on. And then we can just thread that one in. So that's our pipe fitted in. Conduit is in and on. And uh, if it is slightly out, oh, I don't think we need to worry about it. So we've got two sockets there. We're gonna put two on here. So I'll make up two more, the same as we did for that one. So we've already got our bush. So we just need a Sorry, we've already got our coupler, so we just need a bush to go in the end, and then one bush and coupler, two, one coupler with two bushes to tighten the two back boxes together. So let's get that set up with our drill and our vac. 
So that is the first hole. This is our second hole, we'll go a little bit steadier. And then we've got one more hole to do on this side. So we'll just get our drill. We'll put our brass bush back in. And then marry it up at this end. Brass bush just screwed into place. I used to position these top and bottom at the ends which made it quite a bit easier to uh, get your fingers in and fasten because you had a bit more behind these threaded connectors. We'll get our bush tool have to do little bits at a time it's quite fr frustrating at times but a little bit at a time pinch it at an angle turn the top piece and then you can get the end and then you can turn it but it doesn't need to be that difficult but it is so we'll get a couple of screws and you can see our Pictures are right there. That one was a little bit out, but it came good. And then that one in position. And then that one in position. And that finishes well away from our blind coming down, so that's not going to cause us any issues either. Right. So that's four back boxes in, two more to go in down there. I think it's time for a cup of tea. So we've managed to clear a bit more space, or I've managed to clear a bit more space, and I've decided what I'm going to do is to take these sockets just up to the edge of the, uh, the waste pipe that's coming down, um, because I'm not going to put all the tray work and everything up the back end that I thought about originally. What I will do is we will put these sockets in, power them up, and that'll be it for this session. And then what uh, what we'll do is we'll put the lights in on some unistruck going across the ceiling, and we'll come out of here with some tube and a timer and whatever contactor and sensor that's required, and we'll go up and pick up the supplies for the lights and wire those in accordingly. Uh, but we can do that. Um, going forward and uh, we can just tidy up the rest of these sockets today so in order to do that we need to just get a length of conduit to about there about that length 
and that's going to be we'll go for 61 inches so we're back out here with the pipe vise and the pipe and we're going to go with 61 inches to the end of that coupler so 61 is going to take us to that number four that's nice and easy don't need to mark it up i can see where it's going to be so we'll get this into the vise go about there clamp that up nice and tight pick up the hacksaw and we'll cut across the four so that'll do us it's more than enough take our stock and die away undo the clamp and we'll go and get a coupling on that There's our couplings. Get that into place. That's all good. And we'll just put a couple of saddles on this length down here. And we pretty much know where to drill, so we'll just so we'll just get that drilled in. First one, maybe there, and then another one just about here. Plugs and screws, a couple of saddles, a red plug, a red plug, this saddle. in very good and then we can lock into the saddles I think this saddle at this end might have just gone a little lower but that's not really a problem I'll do that lovely and then we'll make up our last two pairs of sockets okay normally I would um, have that on a cable runner and start pulling 
you know cables through all the holes etc but you know they're not that long and that wide so I should be able to manage without getting these knotted up too much it will be a little bit of a pain but uh, let's start pulling some of these in just now <clears throat> So we'll just tape these together. These are 2.56491X single cables and we'll just push them through so that they can go down to that socket position. We should see that get that pop out at the end. There you go. So we're pulling off to get this into the house. So that's going to be that much. That should go through to the house lovely. We'll pull enough for that. And then if we just tape up once more, we can pull a full run down to the absolute bottom end down there from this socket. So we'll send it down. You see it pop through. Take plenty off of these. Like I say, these normally be on a pole, but uh, I haven't got one with me. Uh, the time to set one up, I've already done it. So we'll pass this straight through to the end, and then we just need enough to get from the end socket back and into the house. And then a small link just for that top end and that will complete our ring. There you go, that passes through a lot easier with that lumpy end on. So we'll pull enough, make there enough to go into the house. Very nearly cut it too short then, if you noticed. So we've got enough there for each of the sockets. We can start terminating these off. What we will do is to make it safe, we will earth the back box. These aren't the best cutters in the world. So we'll put our cable into the back box and we'll finish with them horizontal so the screws are both horizontal and that's a nice finish so we'll do that with the rest of these sockets and then I'll see you in a bit. There we are then, two sockets, another two sockets and two sockets down there on the end. All powered up, all working, all nice and happy. We'll test it, see it trips off, reset it and it goes back on. So that's great, six powered sockets in for today. The next job electrically wise is gonna be the lighting. So that's it. 
So get out there and make the best of the rest of your day. Hope you have a good one. If it is the end of your day, then have a great tomorrow. Other than that, you know, be kind to others, animals and the planet. And as always, I'll see you again in the next one.